Barakim Habarim. Welcome to Messianic Moment Ministry. I'm Stephen Bruck. Hey, you know who you are. Today's the 18th day of June 2024. We read and hear about God's grace all the time. It may describe an action from God. It can also describe a prayer said before a meal. But it is not forgiveness. By the way, if you prefer to read this message, there's a link you can click on to the Messianic Moment website below in the description. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to both that website and here on the YouTube channel. Like my Facebook page. I have a Facebook group called Just God's Word. I invite you to join that as well. And if you like what you get here, you'll also like my books available through links on the website or on Amazon. And one last thing. Please share these messages with everyone you know to help this ministry continue to grow. All right, well, when we read or hear about God's grace, it's usually associated with forgiveness, which leads to salvation, but the God's grace is not really a thing, you know, like the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, which we can feel and have living inside of us. Grace is not God's forgiveness. It is his willingness to, to forgive, okay? Grace is God's willingness to forgive. I know, I know. What the heck is that supposed to mean? All right. <clears throat> you know that when we sin, we separate ourselves from God's presence. Every sin, no matter what it is or who we sinned against, is first and foremost against God. King David knew this. When after he sinned, I mean, he sinned against Bathsheba, he sinned against Uriah, he even sinned against Joab. But he said his sin was against God and God alone. That's in the Psalm 51. Okay, so now, being separated from God's presence and deserving really of nothing but punishment, as per God's rules, we need to be forgiven in order to once again be with God. And for that to happen, God gave us the sacrificial system. That's Leviticus 1-7. through And later, actually much later, he sent to the world his Messiah, Yeshua, to replace that part of the sacrificial system dependent on the temple in Jerusalem, which, after 73 AD, wasn't there anymore. The sacrificial system is the example of God's grace. Without that system, there would be no way for us to be forgiven. Likewise, the sacrifice Yeshua made, that replaced the need for an animal sacrifice at the temple, which was at that time the only place we could make a sin sacrifice. That's Deuteronomy 12. We also see an example of God's grace in Ezekiel 18.23, where he tells us he doesn't desire anyone to die, but rather that they turn from their sin, called teshuva, and live. Can you see now that, that God's grace is not a thing? It's his willingness to forgive us. More than his willingness, it is his desire to forgive us, even when we sin against him, so long as we are truly repentant. Yeah, yeah, being truly repentant is a big part of receiving forgiveness. <laughs> Duh. If you aren't really upset that you sinned against God, remember, every sin is against God, then it isn't likely that God will forgive you. Grace notwithstanding, because, well, God isn't stupid. If you sin and don't care that you sinned, you won't be forgiven. I mean, get real, people. God wants to forgive us, but he won't forgive an unrepentant sinner. And you can't fool God. So, no. I hope this message has helped those who have always thought God's grace is his forgiveness to now know better. Forgiveness is based on confession, which means you recognize you did sin. Repentance feeling remorse for having sin, and sacrifice, which now is available through Messiah Yeshua. God defined the sacrificial system because he knew that we wouldn't be able to overcome sin on our own, and his grace, which comes from his desire to be in communion with us, is why he created that system of forgiveness. All right, well, that's it. Thank you for being here. Like I said, that's it for today. So, he wrote and Baruch Hashem.